Now the other thing we need to do is the spawn points can't be active when the game starts. It has to be activated by this script. The script that used to activate the player is now going to activate the spawn points. And you can see that transform is missing. That used to be the player, now it's going to be the spawn points. So when the spawn points are activated, we need the script to do something. And we can do that using the onEnable method. So what is onEnable going to do? First thing it's going to do is it's going to look to see if we're connected to the network. If we're not connected to the network, i.e. we're not the server or we're not the client, that means we're in the solo game. So if we're in the solo game, we're just going to current instantiate the first default character at the first spawn point. If we are connected to the network, then our player is going to have an index number. It's going to depend on this network player to string. That's going to give us back an index number. For some reason, Unity returns that as a string. We're going to parse it back to an integer so that we can then use that integer to index and network instantiate character one or character two at spawn point one or spawn point two. So that's all this script is going to do. Now there's one other little bit of housekeeping left to be done, and that's that both of these characters need to be tagged as main character. And they should be put on the layer main character as well. We do this because our script is looking for these tags, and if it doesn't find these tags, then the game won't behave correctly. So you want to make sure you have those tags set up. All right, now we should be able to run the game, at least as a solo game. And there you go, our character has instantiated. Something else. Unity messes up the animations, so we need to fix the animations. Let's go back and fix those now. If you look at our characters, you can see these animations are missing. We just need to drag them back in. All right, so we want idle, walk, run, and jump pose. And let's check the other character as well, since we're here. Okay, that one's all right. All right, let's try this again. Okay, there you go. Now we have our character. He walks, he jumps, and he runs. That's exactly what we would expect from a solo game. So it's not going to work quite yet in a network game because we don't have a network view on these players. If we want to network instantiate things, we need a network view. There's no network view on either of these, so we need to add the network view. Network view for that one, right here, and a second network view for this one. Okay, now both of our characters have network views. In theory, we can instantiate them in a network version of the game. Let me just bring this to full screen. All right, let's see if I can join a game. I've got a game running on another machine so I should just be able to join that game. So there you go. You can see that I've got my other player. There's no hat on that player, but the camera seems to be behaving a little strangely. Let's see what happens as I try to run across to the other side of the island. You'll notice the camera's not behaving correctly. Something's not right with the camera. What's happening here is both the player on this machine and the player on the other machine have their control scripts running. We need to do something. We need to change the behavior of the copy of the player on the other machine. What we can do right now just to get things working is we can disable the control and camera scripts just to get things going. Later we're going to have to fine tune the behaviors a little bit more. This is kind of the big hammer approach. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I have this script called Network Player Setup. And network player setup does a couple of things. It uses this method called on network instantiate. This method is invoked whenever network instantiate is used. So it's only going to be invoked on the players when they're network instantiated. The first thing it does is to check to see if the network view is mine. That means is this running on my computer or is it running as a ghost or a clone on another person's computer? I happen to like the term ghost. I like to think of the main player as the one instantiated on my machine, and the one instantiated on the other person's machine is kind of a ghost. It's sort of remote controlled and moving around, and not really being controlled by the player, but a ghost version of the player. So I actually have created a tag in the literals file called ghost character tag. We can see it here. 
And what I actually do is I tag that as a ghost layer. Later, I'm going to create a ghost layer as well. But for now, we're just putting it on the default layer. And then what this script is doing now is it's just finding the controller script and the camera script, and it's just destroying them on the ghost. So let's assign this and see what happens. All right, so we're going to take this script and we're just going to drop it right onto this controller. And we're going to do the same thing on the other one. And remember, what this is going to do is just disable some behaviors on the ghost player. Now let's take a look at what happens. Okay, now that we've assigned the network player setup script to our player controllers, let's fire this up again and try joining that network game that's running on the other machine. Let's run over to the Far Island and check out our ghost player. Okay, now the camera is correctly following our player. That's because we disabled that behavior on the ghost. We're just going to run over here so you can see one other thing. There's the ghost of the other player. You notice he's kind of running like crazy and he's not quite the right size. So there's a few little issues that we still need to deal with with our ghost on our other player. We have a lot of other work to do. But what we've demonstrated now is that we can at least instantiate the players across the network and run them around in the scene.